Okay. This is a James P. Madonna for a Mega Life 21, the uh, hard hitting uh, truth internet talk radio station. And this is the segment Chisler's Hall of Shame exclusively for progressive discussions. Now, I want to enter this food company that sells frozen foods, frozen dinners in your local supermarket, Marie Callender. All right. There you go. Here's Marie Callender's Salisbury Steak Dinner. And uh, we can get a close shot of it. Looks like a heap and helping on that dish, according to the box, right? Um, well, let me just get a shot here. Let me just get a shot without the glare, which is not easy. Okay, that's Marie Callen, their Salisbury steak with uh, broccoli and cheddar cheese on the side. And home fried sliced potatoes. They look like red skin potatoes, right? Looks like a decent portion, doesn't it? All right, this is what you actually get in the box. Okay, it shows you how deceiving American food companies are. This is what you actually get. Excuse me. I'm trying to get this straight. That's it. And guess what? The Salisbury steak probably makes up not even eh, two thirds of the space. It's all mostly gravy and cheap filler, which is sliced white potatoes, and that little side dish that's supposed to be broccoli and cheddar cheese, I believe. Okay, it's mostly gloppy cheese, which I think is more closely related to Velveeta than real cheddar cheese. All right, let me try to get in closer. Ah, oh, you son of a... Anyway, I'm trying to get, I'm trying to keep a ste steady camera here. But anyway, see, it's mostly this melted Velveeta type of processed cheese. I, I don't think it's real cheddar. Okay, and not that much broccoli. Shame on you, Marie Callender. Hall of Shame inductee for this week on the Chisler's Hall of Shame. Progressive discussions. Shame on you, Marie Callender. And then we're going to go back to the box. All right. At that gigantic portion that you see on the plate. Shame on you, Marie Callender. Okay, it just happens to be, and, and, and get this, it happens to be Saturday afternoon, February the 1st, 2014. Brand new month. No more Jean Vier. And I'm glad. Why are you, why are you glad? Because I hate Jean, uh, Jean Vier. <laughs> Supposedly the coldest month of the year, you know. No, I thought it was February. We're now nah, we're far away from the sun in January. I thought, well, there is a... We start moving back now. We're moving back. In other words, closer. the um, the farthest from the from indirect rays, indirect no, rays. direct rays. Though. Direct is the equator, sir. Exactly. We don't get And that. then as you move away from the equator, the sun is more, the, the radiation is more on a di diagonal. Yeah. But in the wintertime, it misses and, us um, entirely. Um, and besides, you know, actually our weather is more uh, more dependent upon the wind than the sun, per se. You know the conditions of the ocean also determine the weather? Exactly. Exactly. You know, and I don't know what's going on with the radiation in the Pacific Ocean right now from Fukushima. I mean, it's bad news. And, and you know, mainstream media doesn't tell, the, doesn't update oh. the people on this. And this is something uh, like uh, new. The mainstream. The why do you think it's called the lamestream media? 
Even Sarah Palin calls them that, but for a different reason than I just. Well, Repub Republicans um, keep on repeating themselves with these myths, like the liberal media, which I don't think ever existed. They, you know, anything liberal, anything right, is liberal to them. Anything that's right. Anything that right is not right wing, as no. in correct. Exactly. Dealing it's with liberal. the truth. Exactly. It's liberal to them. You know, it's just like the mythical welfare queen. You know? Or that one that well, you you put up the other day. On Facebook group, yeah. Yeah, the uh, the, the, the sales slip. Oh, for the hospital. For, for the lobsters. What, was that an uh, appendicitis, was it? No, the, 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 the sales slip that showed that the uh, uh, person on food stamps goes in and buys all kinds of lobsters. First of all, first of all, right-wingers, tea, tea baggers, it's none of your damn business what people buy with their food stamps because guess what? If a person squanders their food stamps on luxuries, uh, they will have less left over for the rest of the month. So well, they're they're only hurting themselves. Supposedly, they're not hurting you, you teabagging idiot. Supposedly, what they're trying to say is that these people go and they buy these expensive things and then they sell them, so oh. they get cash. They get cash. Well, let them let the teabaggers try to live on what the hell welfare gives you. Well, if a person can go in with food stamps and buy all kinds of lobsters and et cetera, et cetera, obviously this is a big family. Listen. Because, as I said in my criticism, where I said that the sales slips was actually bullshit, bullshit, it because be, yeah. because a person who goes on food stamps, talk about ba uh, background checks for guns, they background check you like nuts. Yeah, but it's okay. It's okay for them to cut them meaning the Republican Congress. It's okay for them to cut food stamps yeah. across the board for everyone. Uh, that's okay uh, for cutting it. And having food stamps is a big problem to them, but it's, o but it's fine to give uh, the corporate farms billions of dollars in subsidies. Of course. That's, that, that's, that's, and Exxon Mobil. That's fine and dandy for and Republicans. And the rich. Yes, those are things that because they are the job producers. They keep on repeating the same broken record. Yes, they record. do. The they job producers. Well, where are they producing them? Let me think real hard. Uh, uh, should I say China? Uh, Bangladesh? And the office jobs are now in the Philippines? Paying these people chicken scratch, chicken shit wages, of course. Um, yeah, then you would say to the job creators, creators. Now, uh, the Muppet face Paul Ryan, uh -huh. he, his photo was uh, on this article about the GOP Congress wanting to, uh, they want to impeach Barack Obama. Yeah. Uh, of course, if the Democrats do not have control of America, uh, you can kiss welfare and Obamacare and you can kiss all the good things for the, for the people goodbye because you'll be you'll be starving to death if you're poor yeah because you can't can't pull yourself up by the bootstraps because you is lazy you was lazy oh yeah that's what this uh, this friend of mine who's uh he doesn't realize it he denies it but he he's a uh, right winger disguised as a, a moderate libertarian, but he's yeah. really right wing. Really? You know, he says uh, welfare makes people lazy. Uh huh. Uh, All right, where are you supposed well, to get? What about the capital gains for the rich? Yeah. What does that do? Well, where's the jobs? I told him, where are the jobs? Show me the jobs. Jobs that that are not nitpicky. Jobs that accept entry level people out of school when they jobs graduate. Jobs that pay a living wage. Pay a living wage. Now, of course, the, uh, what is it, the Aris Arizona Chamber of Commerce wants Americans to compete with Bangladesh and accept less money than Bangladesh people. Lower our standard of living. Where do, where do they want, where do they want the unemployed to live, Arizona? In a treehouse? 
Like Tarzan? No, because probably some big corporation or some big wealthy person owns that tree. Owns the tree, yeah. yeah. On the land, yeah. Exactly. So you no, 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 put no tree house there. Well, the fat cats want to evict people that live in these uh, 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 forest villages and tents. The tent people. You, you notice they put, they put, um, they give everybody who's poor and homeless like these nicknames. You know, you have the, uh, before you had the bag ladies. Ugh. Before that, they called well, them the, the winos or the boxcar willies, the, the hobos. Hey, once upon a time, hobos were, a, you know, they, they were a good thing. They weren't as demonized. Yeah. You know, then you get yeah, bag ladies. They now now you box have... Boxcar to boxcar, from city to city. Yeah. Now, you now, uh, now uh, vagabond. That was the days where they called them vagabonds. They were vagabonds. Uh, now you have uh, the tent people. You know... Uh, In America. Almost like they want to be tent people. See, this is what the right-wingers say. They, they demonize the poor and the homeless like they want to live in a tent in the woods. Yeah, because it's their fault. They're lazy. And, 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 oh, I suppose the veterans coming back from Iraq and Afghanistan... They should have died on the battlefield. That are homeless, that okay? are homeless and can't That's get a job. Field. They're lazy too? They should have died on the battlefield. So we don't have to pay for their their uh, hospitalization and, and, and recuperation and you all know, this other crap. I couldn't believe it when I read it. And stop, <laughs> me, stop me if, it's, if I'm wrong or inaccurate. I read that Dick Cheney made like thirty-nine billion dollars off the Iraq War. Hey, is that and unheard? All the is that unheard of? Yeah. Halliburton, crony. Halliburton. I'm sorry, Halliburton made that much money. Cheney, when he became vice president, never gave up his connection to Halliburton. So therefore, everything that they made uh, during his uh, tenure, he now shares in. Okay? Mm -hmm. It was all corrupt, baby. All the private contractors over there, that's what that war was all about. Was making billions for their cronies. Mm -hmm. Cronyism, yeah. yeah. Well, let me formally begin the show like I was supposed to. But since this show is unrehearsed and unpredictable and ad-libbed and uncensored, of course, uh, corporate and FCC free, Anything could happen. We don't have any written in stone format. So let me uh, get the formalities out of the way. Uh, welcome to Progressive Discussions. <coughs> I'm your host, James P. Madonna um, of Mega Life 21, and I will formally pipe aboard my illustrious mentor and co host with my authentic bosun's whistle that I got back in. The 1980s at uh, Newport, Rhode Island, mm. the Ocean State. Mm. Arr, arr, welcome aboard our progressive liberal starship censored. The one and only, the Reverend Dr. William J. Eisenman. How are you feeling this week, sir? I just lost a few hairs in my ears. You know, no. the did follicles I that. Uh, did I did I tell you, one time I blew this at the at the local Saddlebrook Park, uh, and you were and, surrounded by dogs, and uh, and all of a sudden out of nowhere, like a bat out of hell, this a uh, bull mastiff ran up to me with his leash dangling from his neck. He must have escaped, escaped from his, his owner. owner, and mm -hmm. he and he looked like he was strong enough to do that, but he was very nice, and they're usually are affectionate dogs. Uh -huh. He was nice, but yeah, he, yeah, it's it's a high decibel uh, ancient instrument, which originally came from I think the 12th century uh, uh, English Navy during the Crusades. Uh -huh. It was a method, uh, just like the African drum I had. It was originally a communication device, because it's very hard to hear orders on the high seas with a sailing vessel. It's not easy, so they had a series of Tweets or just like just like they have this series of flags. So yes. Later on, the flag. <laughs> right. Exactly. And and the lights, the flashing the lights, yeah. lights. Morse code. Right. Correct. Well, let me begin. The beginning. Uh, we are coming to you 
uh, from the Newsletter Censored Research Center in Northeastern New Jersey. And let me get out of the way my salute to my, uh, my good friend from Western Australia, uh, Mr. Um, Mr. Shawnee Harris, Ooh. an Aborigine gentleman who is uh, the foremost uh, activist for um, civil rights for his people, for the Aboriginal people, and he has recently won the Thorny Devil Award for 2014. Our Thorny Devil Award for um, the the greatest contribution to uh, civil rights for his people, for Aboriginal people, mm -hmm. against the ty tyranny and racism and and greed and uh, and and abuse from the uh, the European colonist side of Australia, the Australian government, uh, rich white men, of course, just like our government, rich white men. Uh, parasitically <coughs> leeching off of uh, the masses and they had to deal with much of the same racism that the uh, African Americans ha have dealt with in the United States slavery and uh, and prejudice and, and so on and so forth and uh, right now they want to steal their sacred land mm. for business purposes the is there any other purpose? The big corporate plutocracy machine in Australia wants to steal sacred Aboriginal land for making money. Not borrow, not rent, but steal. And uh, another organization is fighting for uh, sovereignty, uh, just like Native Americans have done in the United States, their own self-governing Aboriginal government consisting of their sacred land I sure hope so which might involve uh, the entire outback which I hope they win and I hope they get gain independence so I salute Shawnee Harris uh, 2014 Thorny Devil Award from Mega um, I'm sorry from Newsletter Censored uh, the, the first um, award of the year and for those of you that do not know what a thorny devil is, it is an indigenous, uh, spiny, I mean spiky lizard Ooh. from the Australian outback, only found in the Australian outback desert. And uh, it is very similar to the American horned lizard or a horned toad. Horny toad. Horny toad. It's very same shaped body. Very and, sexy animal. Very yes. Horny. And they both have one thing in common. Yeah. They feed uh, almost exclusively on ants. They like ants. No uncles. No uncles. So, no ants. But they get plenty of antioxidants by eating all those ants. Levity bells. Antioxidants, uncle oxidants. Do, uh, does uh, Australia have those big, or is that just in Africa, the big uh, ant hills? Termite mounds? Yeah, I like termite mounds. You know, that's a good question. They might. I mean, I know they have a very high uh, concentration of uh, various uh, very poisonous uh, snakes and spiders in Australia. Oh, God. And they have, but they have a lot of lovely, nice creatures, too, of course. But anyway, the first award winner for 2014 Thorny Devil Award, th uh, I, I salute it with great respect, Mr. Shawnee Harris of... Western Australia, I think he lives in the Perth region, which is the uh, major city on, on Western Australia, along with Paul Taras Wolkowinski, the uh, Indian club m master. Mm. He's from there. Anyway, I want to uh, start by, uh, I don't really have a monologue to, to speak of um, today, so we're going to sink our teeth into our readings right away but I just want to talk about the video that you saw at the beginning of this show the uh, inductee into our Chisler's Hall of Shame is the company that makes Marie Callender frozen dinners and as you saw uh, Dr. Bill um, the portion that is portrayed on the box has nothing to do what is actually in the box mm. you know you have a humongous portion on the outside and when you uh, take 
the tray out, what you see is very pitiful and very uh, microscopic in comparison to what you see on the box. Uh, it's a form of false advertising, but hey, these companies are deregulated, you know, and uh, so shame on you, Chisler's Hall of Shame, Marie Calendar, Frozen Foods. Um, it's mostly gravy. It was a Salisbury steak dinner. It was, uh, it looked like a huge Salisbury steak on the box, but inside it was mostly gravy. And uh, they're so cheap that the broccoli with melted cheese was mostly melted cheese. And they couldn't what even. What kind of cheese? But I don't know. You know, fake cheese like Velveeta. Even or even if they call the cheddar, it's probably Velveeta yeah. because it looked like Velveeta. Yeah. And it tasted like Velveeta. Yeah. It was all liquidy like Velveeta. So I'm sure they lied about the Salisbury steak. For all, for all I know, it could be pink slime. Yeah. A pink slime burger, which is all byproducts pureed, and into a patty with ammonia added to it. To disinfect it. A little while ago, the company in making uh, Velveeta was claiming there was a shortage. Oh, somebody was at, my heart bleeds for them. Somebody was at the local shop right today and said there was plenty of Velveeta. We should for be the big bowl game today to put on your nacho. Oh, you mean those those idiots? that get their Super Bowl snacks ready and they instead of using real cheese mm -hmm. they use uh, cheese whiz or Velveeta it's traditional because uh, just like the Philly cheese screw cake. screw tradition uses that uh, crap well I've had Philly cheese steaks going out in in, in, in my area and I always choose like um, uh, um, uh, a melted Swiss, mm -hmm. or you can choose a a uh, a mozzarella or a yeah. provolone if you wish. I choose real cheese. I don't eat processed cheese food, as they call it. Mm. American food. Um, I mean, American cheese is processed, but you know, you take your redneck, red state Americans that uh, do not drink beer or liquor for its flavor. <coughs> They, they, which means they drink the cheap stuff. Is that Miller? Budweiser, Are we talking about Miller? Budweiser, Coors, Miller. Budweiser. Uh, they they drink for the buzz and they eat strictly for flavor alone. Right, so anyway, um, and then also uh, what I was reading was the fact that you know, um, Paul Ryan, old Muppet face. Uh, wants to impeach Barack Obama. Uh, meanwhile, did he say why? The biggest crooks are the Republicans. Yeah, but do they say why? What high crime and misdemeanor has Obama? Well, been, can, uh, they don't. Won? They don't like this. Uh, the fact that Obama said he may have to uh, use orders. the executive order privilege okay. as president of the United States. He has to to date used less than any other president. They, they've gotten off scot-free is what you're saying. Yes, exactly. Anyway, I'm sure if Barack Obama finds the need to use executive orders, it's for a very good reason. Yeah, because the House don't do nothing. They don't do any work. They don't get anything done. They just obstruct. They don't give a shit about the people. They vote 47 times to, de 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 to, 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 to delete uh, uh, Obamacare. Which which provides low income peoples low income people with a very good uh, health care very good health insurance plan and uh, they nothing they, like single payer but that's not as good as single payer but right. but with, which was a compromise by the way no, not going with single payer was a big compromise by by the Democrats yeah which I wouldn't have done the corporatist Democrat corporatist Democrats which are the ones that re, uh, made sure that Chris Christie got reelected. Oh. The same corporate as Democrats. Mr. Christie's in big trouble. Yes, supposedly the, uh, what is it, the prosecutor, what's his name, Wein, Weinberg? Weinstein? No, that's Wisniewski. He's, found the, uh, he's the president of the assembly. Found documents 
to prove that Chris Christie knew about the lane closure. No, Mr. Wildstein said so. That's the guy, Wildstein. He's squealing. If he gets immunity, he will squeal like a stuck pig. Well, he that said, Christie knew. He says he had documents to prove that he has. He has evidence, he said. No to wonder. contradict. Mr. Chris. No wonder Chris Christie had that uh, sad sack puppy dog uh, eyed look on his face as the reporters were trying to flag him down while, while he left the Howard Stern birthday bash. He was invited to Howard Stern's birthday bash. He actually went? Yeah. Wow. And he, he looked very humble and uh, he looked like a child that got his hand caught in the cookie jar. Yeah, well that's what it amounts to. <laughs> <laughs> humana, 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 like like uh, Ralph Cramden on the honeymoon. He got his, he got his, he got, he got caught doing old school politics in New Jersey, as it always was in New Jersey. You know what I mean? Yeah. Mafioso like, shall I say? Uh, either you uh, you uh, comply with the uh, the building contract or the, the project. Uh, in Hudson and Sea Caucus, either you comply with this project, or um, I'll make you pay for it. We'll in take you ways. out, man. We'll take you out. We'll, uh, we'll uh, whack you. No, no. We'll, we'll withhold your Storm Sandy funds. Oh yeah, that. I'm talking about Mayor yeah. Zimmer. Yeah. Yeah. Of of Hoboken. 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 Yeah. Yeah. The uh, which the, got the uh, really hammered. From Storm Sandy, it well, wasn't strong. Well, Hoboken the storm. was the most became the most uh, built up, remodeled, uh, uh, upper class part of Hudson County. Well, it got flooded. The land of the hometown of Frank Sinatra. That's right. They got hit hard, right? Yeah, they got hit hard. Now you see how um, uh, ruthless and. Um, um, vindictive Chris Christie is. It goes with his fat personality. Well, that's yeah, the way big, business is conducted. Big fat mouth. Well, he's a Republican you know? that wants to have his way and f and I guess feels that, uh, like all Republicans, that making money, corporatism is the most important thing. Mm -hmm. you know? Anyway, let us uh, sink our teeth into these readings as I wave my Blackthorn shillelagh. A school district apologized Thursday to outraged parents after the lunches of about 30 students at a Salt Lake City school were all thrown out because of outstanding balances on their food accounts. Salt Lake City School District spokesman Jason Olson said the district is investigating what happened at U Inta Elementary and working to make sure it doesn't happen again. I'm glad you brought up this reading because I, I read about it online and uh -huh. let me tell you something. They sound like there were Republicans that did this. Of course! How, who else would be petty and stingy as to confiscate uh, lunches? Confiscate? They threw it out! They threw it out. You mean as in the garbage? In the garbage. They didn't donate to the homeless? No. Or soup kitchens? No. Which incidentally all that... But hey, wait a minute. All the... You know what they did? They gave milk and an orange to the kids. That's like that's like putting... Gruel. So they wouldn't starve. That's like putting gruel in a bowl like uh, that old movie. Was it Dave, David Copperfield? Was it? Who was that old movie from England where the kids are uh, like an orphan and, and they... Yeah, David Cobb. Uh, they put, put a bunch of gruel in his dish. Oh, uh, uh, yeah, but that, what, what was that? Uh, that's with the... Uh, mush. That's with the, uh, the the pound of flesh guy, no? Or is that Shakespeare? I don't know. It's, uh, I don't know. Anyway, anyway I, yeah. I, I saw it on the Little Rascals, too. They were feeding the kids mush. Yeah. You know, cheap crap so um i'm tired of much for breakfast i'm tired of much for lunch i'm tired of much for dinner but um it's so uh, uh right wing such right wing behavior to uh, be so petty 
as to uh, make a big deal about a school cafeteria lunch, you know, with students that I guess owe tuition money. No, they owed their lunch money. The parents didn't keep up with it for some reason, or the school didn't announce to them that they owed this or whatever. Yeah, and, and of and course, uh, with this uh, conservative form of capitalism that we have, where every friggin' thing has to be paid out of pocket, which is a shitty way to run a country. I mean, every damn thing has to come out of your pocket. Screw them. And, and the media kowtows to them and gives them face time. That's what kills me. Yeah, and the media treats like uh, Republican ideas and Democrat ideas or liberal and, 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 and conservative ideas as the same. They try, to, they try to hit a balance between them. They're not the same. But it comes down to it as truth versus propaganda. Exactly. Like the banner said. Look at the Fox News. They get away with lying all day long. They lie. Well, this 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 school. Which school was this again? Could you please name it? The, the school is called a U I N T A H. Uinta. Okay, let's just call it that. Probably an in Indian name. So and, and where is it located? Salt Lake City, Utah. In a red state. Of course. Well, they they are the second inductees into our Chisler's Hall of Shame. This was a mistake. Yes, yeah, sure. This was handled wrong. There shouldn't have been food taken away from these students once okay. they went through the line. I agree. Erica Lukes said... And wasting the food, no less. Ah! I saw a program the other day where they take old food from restaurants and etc. Yeah. And they prepare it for the pigs. Oh yeah, uh, the, uh, the history ca channel. the casino resorts yeah. in Las Vegas. All that food from the buffets that becomes limp as as it remains in the uh, in on the heated whatever uh, element. All that 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 limp food it just happens to be over over overcooked. That all gets pureed and is sold to pig farmers in in Nevada. They don't donate that to any soup kitchens for a tax write-off or just to be nice. No way. Erica Luke said her 11-year-old daughter came home Tuesday and reported that officials had taken away her deep dish pizza and thrown it out. Oh, that's mean. wonder what kind of deep dish pizza you're going to get in Utah. That's Chicago, man. It's, That's Chicago. It's probably no better or worse than, than your cheapest frozen pizza in the supermarket. I used to know, uh, I used to, uh, well, I still know, a young lady from uh, New Mexico who, her idea of pizza is Pizza, pizza Hut. Oh good. <laughs> well, that's all they have. <laughs> exactly. There's not that many uh there's not that many ethnic people living out west and down south. Or like Lodi, New Jersey well, that pizza. has a pizza place every long. Because we, we have more Italians than cockroaches. <laughs> you know, I mean where it's a very multicultural, multi ethnic part of uh the country, the the US is the northeast. Very, very uh, multi-ethnic. Well, that's where they came, across the ocean, across the pond. Ellis know? Island? Yeah. But some went to Chicago. Like, uh, uh, there's supposed to be more Polish people in Chicago than there is in Poland. That's the joke. Yeah, well, but and that there's was... And there's an Italian neighbor, a big Italian neighborhood. There's, a, uh, there's even a Japanese neighborhood. There, it's, it's, Chicago is in the north. And, and Yeah, but that and, move west came later, you know. I mean, they, yeah. uh, they obviously hunkered up yeah. for some time on right. the East Coast. Just like the, the Irish uh, yeah. settled in Boston and the, uh, and the a lot of Germans settled in Pennsylvania. Uh, and I hear there's Middle Eastern, there's a huge Middle Eastern area in Detroit. 
uh, mostly. Oh, yeah. I think Lebanese. Uh, there's a, an Iranian, a, a huge Iranian neighborhood, huge in Los Angeles, mm. uh, and so on and so forth. Mexican, this and that. You know, so the major cities and the north are multi-ethnic, and the other states are not. So, you know, she hasn't had pizza if all she knows is like Pizza Hut. Pizza Hut. The action was humiliating and demoralizing, Erica Lukes said. People are upset, obviously, by the way this was handled, because it's really needless and quite mean, she said. Regardless if it's two dollars and or five dollars, you don't go about rectifying a situation with a balance by having a child go through that. And throw it away. Throw it away. Olson said, excuse me, students whose lunches were thrown out were given milk and fruit. So I suppose they felt justified in wasting all this food? Well, hey, pay your bill, buddy. You know, you, your bill. you can always, so when something is freshly cooked, you can always freeze it. Yeah, exactly. You, know, you can freeze it. The school is in a middle class neighborhood, and the district qualifies for federal reimbursement on lunches. So, in other words, that lunch that they threw out, they're going to still get paid for it by the taxpayer. So, what is the point in what they did? Well, they showed them kids and their parents, you pay your bill. Yeah. They, I think that's what, like, what, what Nestle would like to do with water, right? Yeah, Nestle you feels... You get no water if you don't pay your bill. Nestle feels that people do not have the right to drinking water. Correct. The CEO, wow. the CEO of Nestle. Meanwhile, for, for hundreds of millions of years, creatures have been drinking water for free on this planet. Now, all of a sudden, the... The CEO of Nestle says no? Yeah. They, they, as almost, soon as you're a corporation. But they play God, And Billy, you get big enough. Billy Bones. You start issuing orders. They baby. play God. You, you exactly. See, they, they, they have elevated themselves to demigod status, these corporate CEOs. Because they have paid off the politicians to let them become like demigods. Exactly. If the students select certain offerings that are within nutritional guidelines, oh God. then they're reimbursed. The government's nutritional guidelines, <laughs> they yeah, are right. so outdated. Yeah, that, that's for sure. It's pathetic. Well, they weren't dated ever, actually. Even when they were created, they yeah, were outdated. Exactly. They were... They weren't uh, in line. I mean, come with optimal on. Optimal uh, uh, nutrition. Sixty milligrams of uh, vitamin C as a daily requirement. Thirty international units of vitamin E. Give me a break. According to Politifact, six members of the Walton family. The owners of Walmart. Yeah, not the show. Not <laughs> have more wealth than nearly 42% of the American people. While we as a society have to subsidize their underpaid workers with food stamps. And, and they even bitch about the money their employees are receiving right anyway. Now. Yeah. As well as filthy rich as they are. Meanwhile, corporations are holding on to a record one trillion dollars of wealth in their coffers. With this power, the one percent have managed to lobby politicians and to guide the bulk of the recovery dollars back into their own pockets. Is that the redistribution upward, the siphoning upward in progress? Yes. 
while the middle class continues to lose ground. What else is new? What else is new? Is this what Republican trickle-down economics looks like? Yes. No, it's, no, it's Republican trickle-up. It, it's Siphon it, up. It's a siphon up economics. <laughs> the devil's economics. Yeah. You know, uh, you, we're going to have to pause when this, when this uh, bad boy kicks in. We shouldn't have too much of that today because it's going to be fairly... Uh, yeah, but did, nice you, did you lower the... You don't have to lower. Of course you do. No, you don't. What temperature do you have it on? 72, and it stays there oh. all winter long. Okay, so it either it just kicks in more often or it kicks in less, less often? Less often in 40 degree weather <clears throat> than 15. Isn't that what you more or less have with the air conditioning in the summer? You have it set to uh, 72? No, that's usually set at 70. Oh, because it has to get to the other side. Okay, I hear, I hear you. I hear you, man. I hear you, man. For the longest time, the Marlboro Man was synonymous with America's image of itself. Tough, self-sufficient, hard-working. Self-sufficient. In one of the 20th century's most famous and ad campaigns, which began in the 1950s... Hold on, please. Okay. He was rugged. But handsome man. Yeah, rugged. Yeah, all dried out from the desert. Who did the jobs that needed to be done? And he almost always had a Marlboro cigarette <laughs> in his mouth. Today, the reality about the Marlboro Man is darker. At least four actors who have played him in the ads have died. Smoking related diseases. Really? Really? Four past Marlboro men have died from smoke related diseases. Smoking related. Which means they didn't just do the commercial, they used the product regularly. They walked a mile for that camel. They did walk a mile for that camel. <laughs> well, that, that was the old camel unfiltered cigarette ad. The latest was Eric Lawson, 72, who appeared in Marlboro print ads from 1978 to 1981. Wow. He died January 10th in St. Louis, Louis Obispo, California. St. Louis Obispo, yeah. Not uh, Joe Piscopo. No, not, not Joe Piscopo, California, but Louis Obispo. 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 I'm his He knew the cigarettes had a hold on him. Well, then why didn't he quit? His wife said. He knew. Why does it have to be a death sentence to these people? That he couldn't stop. A death, oh, he couldn't stop. He didn't want to stop. She said he died of COPD, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease. Is that like emphysema? Uh, COPD is an umbrella term which uh, takes into account emphysema and uh, asthma and, uh, and you know all of these well, things. You would think these these recent commercials would scare all the, all the smokers into quitting. You can't scare people out of quitting. Why not? It doesn't work. Fear doesn't work. No. Well, then they're they're out of their minds then. Fear does not work. In fact. I have a personal tale to tell. Billy Morrow still smokes a lot. He won't quit. And he knows. Exactly. He, he knows the dangers. There was a gentleman I knew, an uh, elderly gentleman, 70 or so. Okay. He spent six months in the hospital with uh, Guillain Barre syndrome. Yeah. Which he got from a doctor, by the way, a needle. Wonderful. And in the hospital, of course, he couldn't smoke and he couldn't drink. He was a, a two-timer. There are tons of hospital-induced deaths and infections and such. Well, when he came out of the hospital, of course, he hadn't drunk and hadn't smoked in six months. But lo and behold, yeah, huh? he went back! Stupid ass. 
I could never be a psychologist and shrink because I end up strangling my, my clients. <laughs> well, I can't understand anything that is not, that it, that it involves illogic because I think very logically, just like Reverend Bill, both of us do. But isn't it funny how certain individuals... Spock goes to. Huh? Spock goes to. Spock. Yes. Isn't it funny... Oh. Ah, 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 funny. Let me get Spocky and put him out in the open. Isn't it funny, here he is, old man Spock. <laughs> Isn't it funny how there are certain people who are capable of using common sense in everyday life and make decisions based on common sense and intelligence, like people that are progressive, that are not teabaggers, that question everything in life and need to see proof of everything in life. But there are, but most of the people are like lemmings. Yeah, They're well, blithering they're, idiots. But this is an addiction. Addiction. Okay? And an addiction is certainly not amenable to common sense. An addiction is not common sense. No, it's not common sense. You're right. Lawson, unglamorous, Lawson's unglamorous end has been shared by other Marlboro men. My, my brother smokes, and he has two little girls. <laughs> you think he would want to stick around longer for his little girls? Some of the other Marlboro men were true cowboys. Oh, they were real cowboys. Others were just hunky California actors or similarly rugged standards. Yeah, you gotta have a rugged, weather-beaten look. Marlboro man David Millar of Meriden, New Hampshire, succumbed to emphysema in 1987 at age 81. Charles Dudley, a friend, said Millar had smoked for about 40 to 45 years before quitting. Wayne McLaren died of lung cancer in 1992 hmm. at age 51 after 25 years of smoking. Wow. I've spent the last month of my life in an incubator. And I'm telling you, it's not, jo it's not worth it. McLaren said from his deathbed, in Newport Beach, California, where he lay. They are the ones that have to suffer and die a slow, painful death. Not the non-smokers. They have to go through it. So you would think the fear of suffering and the fear of death, and if they have children and grandchildren, to be able for for them to be able to enjoy their their father or their grandfather longer. You would think that would be an incentive for them to just quit. You know, it, 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 it's also like people with diabetes. They still want to eat that sugar. Well, if they want to be a fat fuck... Oh, I'm taking a pill! I don't wanna, have to worry if, about that. If they want to be a fat fuck and they don't want to give up their toxic food, then <clears throat> let them succumb to their own stupidity. <clears throat> Anyway, as he died, he lay there with several tubes connected to his body. I mean, before he took the great dirt sleep, the big dirt sleep? Yes. After he died, a week later, his mother, Louise, said, some of McLaren's last words were, take care of the children. Well, if he would have quit years ago, he would be around to take care of the children. Tobacco will kill you, and I'm living proof of it. Uh, uh, Yul Brenner said that in a commercial. Morton Downey Jr. said that, and they both died. Lung cancer. Another... John Wayne did a warning commercial. Another Marlboro man from California, David... McLean, mm -hmm. not Don McLean, David McLean, 
died of lung cancer at 73 in the UCLA Medical Center in 1995. His widow later sued Philip Morris Company, contending that McLean had to smoke pack after pack of cigarettes during Marlboro shoots so directors <coughs> could create the perfect scene. Oh, hey, Phil, Philip Morris does spike their cigarettes with uh, some substance that uh, increases addiction. Is Philip Morris the one with Joe Cannell? Yeah, I think so. I, that was, of course, directed to two. Wonderful. Joe so the, what, what makes them any different from drug dealers? None. It's the drug. It's a drug. Alcohol's a drug. Yeah, alcohol causes more problems than marijuana. Much more problems than marijuana, sure. Years later, the McLean lawsuit was thrown out. Oh, it doesn't surprise me. When a federal judge ruled that California law in those days was more protective of tobacco companies. Yeah, because uh, the, 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 the judicial system was probably compensated. Well, they're not going to say anything against big corporations and businesses because they're the job producers. Again with your job producers. Yes. Again with your job producers. I think they were just paid off. In a way. Job producers. In a way. The Marlboro Man was finally finished off by the 1998 master settlement between tobacco companies and state attorneys general, which forbade the companies from using humans or cartoons on tobacco advertising in the United States. Mm -hmm. The Marlboro Man will be riding into the sunset on Joe Camel. Florida Attorney General Robert Butterworth quipped after the deal was reached. <laughs> Lo and behold. Lo and behold. Uh, How are we doing on time? Uh, let's do a little Obama thing here. It's short enough, I guess. And then we'll, we'll cut to, to, to your lunch break. It will be interesting to watch the state, well, we did watch the State of the Union address. In these annual speeches, a president usually gives his opinion on how the nation is doing, but also lays out his plans for the upcoming year. There's enough blame to go around as to why we are in a period of uneven recovery, but there's no doubt that corporate profits and the stock market are thriving. More than thriving. Isn't that more siphoning upward? Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah. Whilst <coughs> wages are stagnant and long-term unemployment rema rates remain high. Well, they're making a big stink about uh, about eleven dollars an hour, or ten dollars and ten cents. That's, ten ten. Yeah. That's still chump change compared to the cost of living. Last year, President Obama discussed a higher minimum wage, but that went nowhere in the Do Nothing Congress. It would rather vote 47 times to repeal the Patient Protection and Affordable Care Act, Obamacare, than actually pass laws that might help Americans. Well, they just want people to drop dead. They want the poor to die. In addition, Congress let long-term unemployment benefits to the needy families expire rather than extend them. Mm-hmm. The Republican strategy is to talk non-stop about the deficit rather than do anything about creating jobs or raising wages. And by the way, didn't Dick Cheney say deficits don't matter? He says they don't matter. The rest of the Republicans are screaming bloody murder, saying they do matter. Yeah, but they only do that so they can cut their favorite programs like food stamps. 
Yeah, the military is not affected. No, 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 no. But did uh, is there statistics? Welfare to the big corporations and the wealthy uh, is never affected. I mean, either. statistically, every Republican, when every Republican president left office, did 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 or did, or did he not create a deficit for the following president? Only Bill Clinton, in recent memory, had a surplus. Yeah, I mean Republican presidents. When oh, they, forget about them. When they, they leave office. They never had. So they're not fiscally conservative. No, they're not. They only use the deficit as a ploy, like they use religion. Which they know nothing about the Bible, of course. They they use it as a, like a magician's sleight of hand, a diversion, a diversion, a smokescreen. What is it in the Geico commercial? The f uh, first. Uh, oh, look over there. Yeah, looketh over there. The o looketh over there. That away. The oldest trick in the, the book. Oldest trick in looketh the book. Looketh over it. there. That's it. Sleight of hand. Yeah. And uh, you know, of course, bum beating things to death in the news that are that are not important also distracts people, like uh, like sports, the music industry, you know, Super Bowl. Uh, Miley Cyrus. The list goes on and on and on and on. Uh, um, when she when she when she gets drunk and and, and does crazy things. Uh, uh, um, Mr. Bieber was under Justin investigation Bieber. at Teterboro Airport yesterday. His private jet was searched. Uh, ah. Charter jet. Charter. Charter jet. Yeah. Uh, Lindsay Lohan. You know all these things take up uh, the news Paris to Hilton. to right to. Yeah divert you away from what's really going on stuff yeah mm -hmm. and a republican always points the finger at the so-called lazy poor because they don't want people to see that they themselves are the biggest and worst moochers in the history exactly. of, the, of the world of the united states at least look at over there they are the real freeloaders exactly well, so are the rich with their capital gains, no? And the rich are the biggest welfare cheats. Jeez. Yeah, but they, but instead it's always, look at the poor, look at the poor, the poor, the poor, and that and that and that the ice queen. That uh, was not shy about you know, the Republicans were Corey, not shy. Uh, Corey, uh, what was her three names she had? Yeah, Rogers, uh, Kathy, Kathy McManus. Rogers or M M McGinnis Rogers or I think, I think it was let's, let's just call her uh, Kathy Kathy Rogers the, uh, Rogers one of, one of the four Republican rebuttals. She's a congresswoman from from Washington, from the state of I think she's from Spokane, Washington. Oh my God! How does it, how do you get elected from uh, liberal Washington? She is. How did he elect? Oh, Washington is traditionally a. A blue state? The second state that legalized marijuana. That's true. Along with Colorado. Colorado. Gotta yeah. love them. And, and George is uh, presently fighting for legalization uh, as we speak, but uh, which is a red state. But she, they weren't too shy about getting her Republican rebuttal to Obama's State of the Union speech in there. And it was so nauseating with her fake, saccharine, sweet phony smile and she did everything by herself oh she put herself through college okay. by by working at mcdonald's yes, 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 yes. i never heard of an of an american college tuition being paid off by a fast food salary and it certainly wasn't 725 at that time no the minimum wage <laughs> sure and she kept on talking about oh people have to you know uh, they can't depend on government. They, they got they got to keep on looking for a job and uh, you know make it happen and make it. Yeah, where are the opportunities? Where are the options? Well, they ought to know that the options are very little because of the long-term unemployed, and including the numbers that are not counted for anymore. The people who have given up, oh. which they never tell they you. They live with their mommies. They, they go back home, which they never tell you in the government unemployment projection numbers. And uh, the, the opportunities are just not there. The jobs are not out there. Right, let me finish here. All right, go ahead. They have long used fiscal scare, scare tactics, but with the economic downturn, their party continues to lose voters. About time. That's because Americans see inequality every day and macroeconomics is not high 
on a struggling American's list of priorities. This second gilded age is our own fault because those in office who failed to do their jobs continue to be re-elected. That is why I am hoping President Obama lays out an aggressive agenda to help those in need and that he calls out this inefficient Congress for its lack of caring about Americans. They don't care about the, the people that voted them in at all. No, they don't. Um, and of course the people that voted for them, they're just obsessively spellbound by their uh, crazy religious cult. Aha! That's why they, they keep on voting for them. Yeah. Uh, hey, by the way, the, 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 the people of West Virginia, are they, do they still have that toxic tap water? Uh, of course, yeah, they, they can drink it, but it still stinks, and etc. And you didn't hear anything, they, but they uh, can drink it. Yeah, sure. But it, of course, it went down river into Ohio. Uh huh. But you don't hear anything uh, about yeah, the Ohioans uh, who have been affected. Uh, again, the uh, the American media is is selective. Keep, is is very selective in, in what it, they tell yeah. you. But anyway, we are taking a break. It is time for the Reverend Dr. William J. Eisenman's gastronomic delight known as lunch. And nobody's taking away his lunch like they did those students in, in, in Salt Lake City, Utah. Yeah. Uh, and then we will be back with... Uh, milk, milk and an orange is kind of too much sugar for me. Milk and orange? For, anyway, for somebody going to school. A milk and orange. Milk and orange, yeah. Oh, yeah, sure. they, and they threw away the food, too. It's a yeah. sin, like my grandmother used to say. But anyway, we, we will be back from lunch with promo, followed by our show, and then we, we will return back to these readings that we have for you for this week's Progressive Discussions. All right? Double word. Yeah. So we, we, got, we got a decent amount. This has been a Mega Life 21 production. So you lost another argument with a conservative, right-wing Republican. He talked over you. He screamed and yelled. He brought out the Bible. He thumped it. He quoted scripture to you. You were lost because you came at him with facts. Nothing but facts. And you expected that that would, uh, that would make you look good. That would make you win the argument, but it didn't. You know, you know why you lost, lost the argument? argument? You know you why you're going to lose your next argument? argument? Because you don't, you don't read censored. Censored, a 30 year old newsletter that shows you how to defeat a conservative. Read, read censored, censored, and you'll have all the ammunition, ammunition you need. need. Every, Every time, time you get into an argument, argument with a right wing, wing conservative, conservative uh, so called so Christian. Christian. Censored, censored. That's, that's all you need. Read it, and defeat a conservative. Greetings, listeners. Let me speak to you for a moment about the foundation of our entire organization, Newsletter Censored. It was founded by our mentor, the Reverend Dr. William J. Eisenman, in 1977. It discusses the five taboos of American life, politics, religion, health, human sexuality, and child rearing. You won't find anything like this in the mainstream media and the press. It reveals the kind of truth that most people are afraid to hear. Can you handle it? We are living in the end times, so in order to defeat a conservative and save America, you need Newsletter Censored. Go to www.newslettercensored.com, click on the printable order form page, and with your gift to support this work, get your free annual subscription. This is James P. Madonna of Mega Life 21, the hardest hitting internet talk radio station on the planet. Hi, this is William Morrow. Are you one of those people who join a health club 
And after they have your big overpriced annual membership, you notice that you're on your own with little or no results even after all the promises. Then the website personal trainer is for you. Thank you very much, William H. Morrow the third. So you well, lost, you lost another, another argument, argument with a conservative, conservative right-wing right Republican. Republican. He, he talked over you. you. He, screamed he screamed and yelled. yelled. He brought he out the Bible. Bible. He thumped it. He quoted, he quoted scripture, scripture to you. And you were lost, lost because, because you came at him with facts. facts. Nothing but facts. facts. And, and you expected, expected that that, that would, uh, that would that make, make you look good. That would make you win the argument, but it didn't. You know, you know why you lost the argument? argument? You know you why you're going to lose, lose your next argument? argument? Because you don't, you don't read censored. Censored, a 30-year-old newsletter that shows you how to defeat a conservative. conservative. Read censored, and you'll have all the ammunition you need. Every time you get into an argument with a right-wing conservative, uh, so-called Christian. Censored, that's all you need. Read it, and defeat a conservative. Greetings, listeners. Let me speak to you for a moment about the foundation of our entire organization, Newsletter Censored. It was founded by our mentor, the Reverend Dr. William J. Eisenman, in 1977. It discusses the five taboos of American life, politics, religion, health, human sexuality, and child rearing. You won't find anything like this in the mainstream media and the press. It reveals the kind of truth that most people are afraid to hear. Can you handle it? We are living in the end times, so in order to defeat a conservative and save America, you need Newsletter Censored. Go to www.newslettercensored.com, click on the printable order form page, and with your gift to support this work, get your free annual subscription. This is James P. Madonna of Mega Life 21, the hardest hitting internet talk radio station on the planet. Oh, shame. Yeah. You, your lunch smells good. And what are you having today? Potatoes and pork. Potatoes and pork? Yeah. Pork and uh, lechon and, uh, and papa? Yeah. As they say in Spanish? Okay, all right, we are back from promo, and uh, yes, just like you heard on promo, the very best way to be a part of this organization is to get your free annual subscription to Newsletter Censored with your gift to support this work. The very best way to join our organization is to do that, so do it now. And to enlighten yourself. Yeah, enlighten yourself because there's more information in that newsletter than there is on our talk shows mm. in, in detail, in print, you know, or on our website. So get your subscription today. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, you sound like, uh, like a, a cattle chewing their cud when you have your lunch. That's because I'm probably chewing too fast. Oh, no, relax, yeah. relax. Well, if I don't chew... Billy Morrow's not calling in, so you uh, got you could, you could you could relax. You could chew normally. If I don't normally. chew fast enough, the stuff gets cold. And there's nothing I hate worse than cold food. It's understandable. It's understandable. Um, yeah, we were just talking off the air about the fact that that when it comes to health care reform, Republicans never really had a solution to health care. They never really had an alternative to Obamacare. They never seemed to have any solutions or, or replacements for what Barack Obama wants to do for the people. Well, two of their solutions is to sell insurance across state lines. Second one is tort reform, so that if you get hurt by a company or something like that, you can only sue for a certain amount of money. That's their two solutions. Which means they want your compensation, your restitution for what you went through 
To be minimal. To be less, far less than what you are entitled to. Yeah. Far less than the pain and suffering and uh, inconvenience and loss of wages and so on and so on. They, they do not want to uh, fairly uh, compensate or give restitution to the, uh, the victim. And let the, pay, the, the company pay out just a little and then they deduct it from their taxes. So, cost of doing business, no problem. Well, they want to they wanna legalize a crooked capitalism, crooked crony. They want crooked crony capitalism to be the law of the land well, and uh, pro putting profit first before everything else. And uh, with that kind of a system, the fat cats are the only ones that gain. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The people mm -hmm. always mm -hmm. lose. The people will always be the loser. Just like uh, I read on that banner, you know, when all is said and done between uh, the, the war between uh, Republicans and Democrats, the right wing versus the uh, left wing, uh, um, fighting between politicians, when all is said and done, what really counts is whether or not the people lost or won today. And they always lose. Because they don't own their government, any government anymore. Corporations are married to the government, the wealthy, plutocracy, fascism. Well, Plain and simple. They, they brainwash people into thinking they have no power. Well, no, they have money, which it has a lot of power. Well, when you control the media, and you control the um, National Guard, and the uh, <laughs> police, and the military, uh, yeah, I would say that's a lot of power. Mm -hmm. You know, especially the media. And then you have dopey people who don't vote their own interests. Yeah, who vote against their own interests, like the teabaggers. Yeah. Because they still believe the bullshit about job creators. They still believe the bullshit of the Koch brothers. Mm-hmm. Just like those idiots still believe that a fertilized egg, or and uh, what is it, a fish, embryo, an embryo that breeds like a fish, or an embryo that breeds like a fish is a, a bona fide human being. When the Bible actually says it is the first breath taken, that is the beginning of life. Well, they make a big show, the Republicans of caring for life when it's in the womb. But when it comes out, you're on your own, baby. They don't care about the child once it's born unless you're a rich baby with a silver spoon in your mouth. But if you're a poor or, or middle class baby, they don't care about you at all. But they care about you when you're in the womb. Yeah, with their, uh, their stupid religious ideas concerning abortion of which the Bible does not even speak to well none of abortion. their none of their uh, counterfeit okay. Christian ideas are from the Bible that's correct the right wing none of it none of it is biblical nope except you know maybe the part about oh. homosexuality you know but uh, that was for well, ancient Israel that was Old Testament well, for ancient Israel. Yeah. It, it, in other words, what you're saying is it wasn't of the time when it's not applicable to Paul, today. When the apostle Paul went to the Gentiles in the it, New Testament, it's not applicable. It's applicable. It was applicable only to those in God's church, the elect, the 144,000, those who are being judged, were being judged back then, are being judged today. Mm -hmm. But the vast majority of human beings are not being judged today. Otherwise, why would we need resurrections? Very true. Very true. Bingo! 
Okay? So anyone comes around and says, Death to homosexuals! Has got a different agenda than the Bible, my friend. Well, we all know the God that G.W. Bush claimed he spoke to often was not the God of the Bible. Because the God is not God of the Bible is not the author of confusion. And what came out of Iraq? Total confusion. Lies and confusion, and also the God of the Bible is definitely not conservative because the Bible commands the rich to give to the poor and help the poor with no payback, including people that need money. The Bible, a loan also, of money, there is no interest. Yeah, the Bible also payback with interest. There's no usury, but our whole economic system is based on usury, isn't it? Yes, it is, sir. And what did Mr. Reagan do back in the 80s? Deregulate? Yeah, he allowed credit card companies to charge whatever the hell they want. And he also shifted the tax burden from the rich to the middle class and the poor. So, so, so the rich have been on a tax and regulations uh, vacation for the past 30 years. <laughs> but these teabaggers still want to blame everything on Barack Obama. Because they have a, a, an agenda which they are not telling us. In what that they're okay. possibly racist and they don't they don't possibly want, they don't want a black man in the White House. That's for sure. That's what I think it is. What did Mitch McConnell say when he got in there? His uh, he wants to his objective is to make Barack Obama a one-term president. Mm-hmm. He, they never did that with Bill Clinton and Monica Lewinsky. I mean, they, they busted his balls about it, but nothing like they do to Barack Obama. They tried to impeach him. Not even anywhere near. Oh, I mean, the harassment of Barack Obama far surpasses that of Bill Clinton. Oh, yeah. But, under the Constitution, I don't know we're getting a blowjob from an intern who's enamored of you is a high crime and a misdemeanor. And the Senate didn't think that either. If you're a president that gives us such a big surplus with no deficit, I think it's very nitpicky to, to get bent out of shape about a blowjob. The one that should be bent out of shape about a blowjob was Hillary, and she wasn't. She's still with the guy. Well, they had knockdown, drag out fights, I heard. We don't know that. But she's still with the guy. Yeah. You're right about that. You're well, right you know. about that. Yeah. So at, while Monica Lewinsky was playing the bagpipes, uh, the U.S. Tickling uh, the ivories. Tickling the ivories. The, the, <laughs> the, the, U, the United States ended up with a very nice um, surplus, not a deficit. So George Bush took care of that, didn't he? G.W. Bush took care of that with his uh, his Bush family obsession with uh, Iraq, the Middle East, and oil, and his tax cut for yeah. the rich. Right, and uh, you think maybe G.W. profited from Halliburton too? One does not know. One that does one. No. Mm -hmm. You done with that, sir? I am done. Let me get it out Finale. of the way and sink your teeth back into the readings. Finale. I am done. Yes. Ah. Ah. Hey, Chubsy Ubsy. House and Senate negotiators agreed Monday on a much-delayed agriculture bill that averts deeper cuts to the U.S. food stamp spending sought by House Republicans. Mm -hmm. The proposed farm legislation, billed as saving $24 billion through food stamp cuts, and the end of a direct payment program for farmers 
will get a vote in the House by Wednesday. Um, so I believe this happened already. Now, I'm not aware of what happened. I believe mm -hmm. that there were no cuts. Mm -hmm. But I can't say that for sure. Right. Want to go outside? <coughs> this bill proves that by working across party lines, we can reform programs to save taxpayer money while strengthening efforts to grow our economy. I was just letting one of the cats out. Our resident mousers. Yeah. By approving a plan that largely keeps food stamps intact, of course they already did cut it, mm -hmm. and preserves most farm subsidies, yeah, a lot of those subsidies go to the big wholesalers and not the little uh, 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 local farmer, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. has been maintained amid a tough political environment that saw an earlier plan rejected in the House. If it passes, the agreement would be another bipartisan achievement by a Congress faulted for a lack of legislative success. I hate that word bipartisanship. Oh. The bill to reauthorize U.S. Department of Agriculture programs governs farm subsidies which encourages planting of soybeans and other crops that lower materials costs for commodity processors. The bill subsidizes crop insurers such as Ace Limited and funds purchases at Kroger Company. You notice that? Money going to the big... Thank you. And other grocers through food stamps, its biggest expense. The agreement reached on food stamps would cut spending by $8 billion over 10 years, or about one-fifth of the $40 billion sought by House Republicans. This is such a drop in a bucket. It's so nitpicky. Cutting the cutting of food stamps, you know. Well, compared to what they what they do waste money on. Yeah, and they kept in the subsidies for all the big boys and girls. No rich person or entity or corporation should ever get money from the taxpayers that they don't intend on paying back with interest. They should well, they not get, get it one in the first place. Why should they need it? They should not get one penny because they don't need it. Yeah. I thought entitlement programs were based on need. It's like a rich uh, uh, politician who turns 65 wanting a Social Security check yeah. and Medicare, and meanwhile he's filthy rich. Uh -huh. What the hell does he need Medicare and a Social Security check for? He can afford to buy his own health insurance and he and ha and I'm sure he has his own huge retirement nest egg. What the hell does he need social security? You know, it's like uh what the hell, man? What the hell? What the hell? Or what the fuck? <gasps> the story of about Microsoft files copyright suit uh, more greedy bastards asked why anyone would want to still use the old Microsoft operating system XP that was allegedly being pirated onto new computers currently a modest number of Microsoft Windows users still run MS-DOS programs and applications MS-DOS was the first version to come out. So what are they pissed off that people are not buying paying? Eight. They're not buying it? Eight, yeah. They're not buying eight? Yeah. Microsoft Windows 8. And they want you to keep on spending money, I know. Unfortunately, the referred to Windows XP is the last edition 
Microsoft issue that will run 20 years of programs, apps at full screen size. The subsequent versions, Vista and Windows 7 and the current Windows 8, will only run them in a reduced size inset screen that produces an in illegible small image that also cuts off the edges. This is obviously unacceptable for being able to read text or to play games where characters disappear off the tops and sides of the viewable area. It's not a good thing. Microsoft itself has intentionally created this version incompatibility situation themselves in current editions and refuses to fix it. See how sleazy corporations are in capitalism? Or to sell. Refuses to fix it. And or support the prior version that does run such software. Leaving the public absolutely no choice but to resort to gray market solutions. That's why, in answer to the story's question, someone would want to run a computer with Windows XP on it. With regard to the alluded Windows 8 unfavorability, I read recently that Hewlett Packard is promoting and selling machines with the prior discontinued Windows 7 version loaded. But apparently here, with the blessing and support of Microsoft, mm. go figure. I hate them. I hate them. They want you to pay for everything, renew everything yearly, pay again, pay again, pay, pay again. again. And make it so that it's only good for a short term. Yeah, and I despise uh, Bill Gates, the douchebag face. Bill oh, Gates. Bill Gates the other day got beat at chess by Magnus Carlsen, the new world champion. Yeah. He was on some talk show and they You know, he he, Bill, Bill Gates Magnus. looks like Bobby Riggs. Remember Bobby Riggs, the tennis player? He has that same stupid hairdo. Glasses. You know, the. Yeah, goofy glasses, face. goofy douchebag looking face. <laughs> See, uh, I mean, uh, operating systems should be like Linux distros. Everything is free. The only problem I have with Linux is I do not understand the wording and terminology that they use. It is, it is words that are just totally, uh, I don't want to call them geekish. For, foreign, but geekish. They're, they're, they're like, it's They're like uh, with lawyers with legalese. Right, right. You can only only a lawyer understands it. Exactly, exactly. Um, you finished with that particular reading? Yeah. Because I want to say something that I. Uh, it's a little. It's not related to this, but it's yeah. a culinary tip. Um, you know, we're foodies here at Mega Life Twenty One Newsletter Censored. Um, my sister <coughs> told me something very clever. She says, uh, anytime you make a um, pot roast, a pork loin, or a meatloaf on top of the stove. Or a pompatoni, what is that called? Pompatoni, the meatloaf with the stuff, with the yeah, egg in the middle? Yeah, whatever, whatever kind of stovetop meat entree that you plan on cooking that is done in a, in a pot with a cover or a Dutch oven or whatever, on top of the stove, she says, you take long large peeled carrots and you put your carrots first and then rest the meat on top of the carrots mm -hmm. almost like the carrots are a natural type of grill to elevate the meat so it doesn't stick to the pot and also allows the steam to get circulate. to circulate to get under the meat mm -hmm. so you have a natural type of uh Convection oven. Convection, and and you don't you don't end up scrubbing the pot when it's all said and done. Ah. Very clever. Thank you to my sister Lisa for for telling me this, for turning me on to this, and uh, it just never dawned on me because a lot of in a lot of cases when you make meat on top of the stove, 
Carrots are quite often part of the side dish, as well as potatoes. So, by putting the carrots underneath the meat, you are giving yourself a lot less work later on. And uh, that's about it. That's all I have to say about that. For the New Jersey birders, the winter of 2013-14 will go down as the season of the snowy owl. Yeah, they're such beautiful animals. By one estimate, as many as 80 of these charismatic raptors from the Arctic have flown down to New Jersey since late November in search of winter hunting grounds. In Bergen County, there's been a sighting in Teterboro. Really? And many in Lindhurst. including at least two snowies providing wonderful looks as they perched on the ice and walkway railings at Decourt Park earlier this month. Is, wouldn't it be funny if a few of them, just like with the Canadian geese and the mallard ducks, if a few of them decided, hey, you know what? Screw the Arctic. <laughs> Screw the North Pole. We like it here in Jersey. We're going to make Jersey our home. And and we ended up with snowy owls. Because they are very pretty. Those stunning owls of Harry Potter fame. I think they're, they're, they're diurnal. Or are they nocturnal? I have no idea. There are a couple know. questions here. We might find something out about that. Okay. They've also been seen at the Wanakew Reservoir in Passaic County. I know it well. And the Picatinny Arsenal Golf Course in Morris County. Oh, Picatinny Arsenal has a golf course? I reckon it does. I've never been there. Picatinny Arsenal, a government facility that tests uh, ballistics, Ooh. weapons. In all, they've been seen in 19 of New Jersey's 21 counties. Camden and Warren are the two exceptions. Well, Camden is a, is a high crime ghetto. It's a very bad neighborhood. I don't think the snowy owls want to go there. I asked Mike Britt, former Clifton resident and an expert birder who has written extensively about winter raptors for his perspective on this magical occurrence. Question. Is New Jersey's snowy owl invasion part of a larger phenomenon? Yes. This epic flight has stretched from Newfoundland down through New England and the mid-Atlantic states with individuals reaching as far south as Florida and even Bermuda. Really? They don't mind the, the subtropical and tropical weather? They don't mind it? Well, maybe they mind it, but they got caught in New Jersey in this stupid weather. Well, I would say the availability of, uh, of food has a lot to do with uh, areas that wild animals choose to remain in or visit. They follow the food. When was the last time there was an eruption or migration shift this large? Uh, answer roughly 80 years ago in the winter of 1926 27. I wasn't around then. No. I wouldn't know. You know? No. Babe Ruth and Lou Gehrig were around, but uh -huh. not, not us. What causes these eruptions? When lemmings up north peak in numbers, Arctic predators such as the snowy owl and rough-legged hawk, which rely on lemmings, produce larger clutches. Yeah, ra the raptors, because they, they eat rodents uh, are a large part of their diet. Come fall, the young snowies are forced out by the adults and they wander south. 
Question, have there been any problems associated with this large flight? And would they stay snowy if they remain so? That's another question. Conflicts at airports, as any large bird or flock of birds, can pose a threat to aircraft and passengers. It was reported in the mainstream media that snowy owls <gasps> were being shot by the Port Authority. Cowards. Such a beautiful animal uh, visiting from the Arctic to kill it, to murder it, uh, where they could just tranquilize it and relocate them. Birders quickly took action and sent a petition with 3,000 signatures that apparently halted the shootings and caused the Port Authority to implement a catch and release program based on the best practices that have been in place at Boston's Logan International Airport. The scumbags. The real tough guys, huh? With, 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 with a gun in your hand. There have been reports of folks getting too close to the birds for better looks or photos. Why are such actions ill-advised? Yeah, why? <laughs> What's wrong with photographing uh, wildlife? You know, bird watchers, uh, with a telephoto Maybe lens. Maybe the raptor will take off your nose. If too well, how close did it get? Well, they're not going to let you get that close. So maybe they will. <clears throat> it is unfortunate, inevitable, because non-birders and novice birders do not realize the harm they might cause. No, they don't. Owls flushed in the daytime are subject to detection and harassment by an array of other birds. Some of which, which, like the peregrine falcon, have been known to draw blood. They are being disturbed during their rest period and may be forced to spend the day in a less than ideal roost location. Well, animals instinctively should know whether an area is inhospitable and uh, they usually move <laughs> but uh, that's why they're here yeah they're all well, right because uh, they move they moved if, if look it would be stupid for a wild animal to go somewhere that did not supply the maximum amount of food and animals have a, a, a natural sense common sense about them Instinctive, instinctively go where the food is. Human, me, uh, human beings are naturally curious about nocturnal creatures. Overlay this with the fact that the snowy owls are cool, mm -hmm. migrate here from some of the most inhospitable places on earth, are large, capable predators, neatly patterned with contrasting white and black. Hold on. Go ahead. And you have all the properties of a magnet for people. First time I saw one was in uh, 2000 on a lamppost at Liberty State Park. I was in awe, especially about the fact that these birds breed in some of the most remote places on Earth but can find a temporary home in some of the world's most urban places. Well, they have peregrine falcons in uh, artificial birdhouses on top of New York City skyscrapers to try to bring back the threatened or endangered peregrine falcon. And uh, from what I understand, the, per the peregrine falcon has made a great comeback because of, the, of help from uh, man bird lovers and uh, you know but uh, these cowards that just choose to shoot a beautiful arctic uh, bird like that you know, I, mean, I feel bad for usually actually in all cases when an animal becomes extinct it's because of man's greed or carelessness mostly greed over harvesting same thing with fish uh, are there any are there any mouses by the door right now or no? Because I saw the other one. No, okay.
Uh, what do we have? That's a it. California school teacher was arrested Wednesday after hundreds of living and dead pythons in plastic bins were found stacked floor to ceiling inside his stench-filled home in suburban Orange County. Really? Wow. As investigators wearing respiratory and respirator masks carried the reptiles out of the house and stacked them in the driveway, reporters and passers-by gagged at the smell. So they've been dead for a while. Some held their noses or walked away from the five-bedroom home to get a breath of air. Maybe, maybe they were, obviously they were inhumanely uh, kept. The smell alone, I feel like I need to take a shower for a week. That was that bad, huh? Said police. Corporal Anthony Bertagna, Bertagna. They're pretty much in all the bedrooms, everywhere. What? Continue. Officers said they found more than 400 snakes. Holy shit. 220 of them dead. As well as numerous mice and rats in the Santa Ana home of William Buckman after neighbors complained about the smell. William Buck? So, well, of course the rodents were the food for the snakes, but even they were found dead and decomposing. Buckman, age 53, was arrested for investigation of neglect. Buckman or Buck? Buckman. Buckman, okay. In the care of animals. Authorities said Buckman lived alone and worked for the Newport Mesa Unified School District. Neighbors said his mother had lived with him but died a few years ago. Was she decomposing in the house? Each snake was cataloged by name and type. And Sandra Berg supervisor for the Santa Ana Police Department's Animal Services Division <coughs> said Buckman told authorities he was involved in a snake breeding enterprise. Why did they all die? House of Horrors! That's the best way I can describe it. You can't breed dead animals. Next door neighbor said the odor became unbearable about five months ago. See, that's the whole problem. When you have a neighbor from hell, you know, you're kind of stuck with them. It got so bad as to where my wife would throw up. She'd get out of the car and run into the house. He said neighbors speculated that they're must be a dead body inside. Police said animal control authorities had tried to work with Buckman for several months after neighbors reported the smell. Did he live there, Buckman? How did he take the smell if he lived in the same house? Neighbors were, were able to smell it, but he lived in the house. A warrant was sought after they were denied entrance to the home. Ah, Buckman knew something. He was hiding something. Yeah, he knew he had 220 dead snakes. So that stunk. He like he enjoyed the aroma of decaying uh, corpses. Oh God! What a sicko! Oh God! Oh, this is all kinds. You know, there's a lot of really um, bizarre psychiatric disorders, like uh, obsessive disorders. I mean, there there are disorders out there that I just learned about, like people who like to crunch on and eat light bulbs. You know, like uh, there are many bizarre 
obsessive compulsions. It's weird. It's humans are strange in, in many ways, as far as creatures go. So that's it. That's it. Boy, time flies. Time flies when you having fun. Just like the weeks fly. Thank you for joining us for progressive discussions. We will see you next week. And like I said again, I want to say hello to uh, our uh, Progressive Discussions Facebook group and our Progressive Discussions Facebook promo page and uh, Progressive Discussions on the Pirate Radio Network and uh, also to our 2014 uh, Thorny Devil Award winner, Shawnee Harris, for all of his good work in uh, defending the uh, God-given uh, civil rights of Aborigine people, Aboriginal people. And that's it. February the 1st. The first show of February 2014. And the first show of, uh, yeah, of February. What do you want from me? It's February 1st. I, I would say banks and post office should be extra packed at the beginning of the month. What do you think? Packed. Ah. Very busy, the beginning of the month. Why? Because all, the, all the, 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 the folk living on fixed income are all in the post office and I don't know. I don't know. What I, the hell are they doing in the post office? I have no idea. There's no more uh, checks that come. Family first, man. You got a card. You got a card well, now. Yeah, and, and and for so and for federal payments, it's direct deposit. Direct deposit. Yes. By by law. Exactly. Which is great because people used to get their their checks ripped off, stolen from the mailbox. You know, all the all those people with itchy fingers. You know. All right, say so long to these people. So long, people, without itchy fingers. Without itchy fingers.